Well, if you like plants, then oh boy do I have the game for you. Plants vs Zombies 2 is drastically different from the first game due to its much faster pace, incentive to play every day, and of course, the plethora of brand new plants and zombies. And the zombies are cool, I guess. But today, we become herbivores. This is ranking every Plants vs Zombies 2 plant. Sadly, this one actually is a bit of clickbait. Sorry guys. We'll be skipping over the plants from the original game for now, and if people genuinely want me to, I'll come back to them. I've chosen about 20 of the brand new plants introduced throughout the adventure mode, and 10 random premium plants I've collected. I would go in order of those two, but uh, premium plants can be a bit of a hassle to unlock. I've been playing this game since the beginning of June, and I think you'll be pretty dang impressed with this collection. You're jealous, it's understandable. Unfortunately though, I have no more freaking money because I had to buy some plants who are only available for five real dollars in the store. <laughs> Guys, I'm poor now. If only people could become a member of the channel or Patreon. <laughs> it's okay, I know you're all poor too. We can be poor together. The important thing is, we'll never be poor as long as we have all our little plants from Plants vs Zombies 2. Pity party over. I much prefer plant parties, personally. And our invitations for today include the Bloomerang, Iceberg Lettuce, Bonk Choy, Snapdragon, Power Lily, Coconut Cannon, Spring Bean, Chili Bean, Lightning Reed, Pea Pod, Laser Bean, Citron, EM Peach, Infinite, Magnifying Grass, Tile Turnip, Sunbean, Peanut, Bowling Bulb, Homing Thistle, Guacodile, Banana Launcher, Enlightenment, Kiwi Beast, Pokra, Bamboo Spartan, Solar Sage, Impair, Puffball, Pyrevine, and Sundew Tangler. The last thing I want to say is that I've randomly upgraded some of my plants. I'm a normie loser, I know! But I'll try my best to take it into account, and I hope it doesn't bother you guys too much. Now, without further ado, let's find out which of these plants I'd party with till dawn, and which ones I'd leave for the zombies on your lawn. Feels weird to start off the list with Bloomerang. Pea Shooter is such an iconic and recognizable plant, but Bloomerang? He's cool and all, but he's nowhere near the most iconic new plant in the sequel. Regardless, he's the first new plant to unlock in the first world, Ancient Egypt. If you are confused by the name, no worries. The PBZ wiki is here to help. Oh, I don't get it. I don't speak Australian. These little boomerang shaped petals are thrown at zombies going through up to three at a time. It's a crazy helpful plan to get so early on, and other than the 175 sun price tag, it immediately renders the pea shooter useless. Something else we now must take into account for every plant is their plant food ability. Plant food is a little power up that lets each plant go sicko mode for a second. Bloomerang launches boomerangs in four directions, killing most zombies nearby. Bloomerang really is a strong early plant, and he looks pretty great too. Obviously the more difficult levels are going to be bad for the boomerang, so he can't be at the top. Let's start off with a B tier. Here's another great early game addition, the Iceberg Lettuce. Free plants are always appreciated, as well as the plants who give you some time to breathe. For everyone who dearly misses the ice room from the first game, well, there's a reason they haven't added it yet. Not only can you now choose a specific zombie to freeze for free, but the plant food ability is literally the exact same as the ice room. Rest in peace, my frozen friend. But enough about that stupid idiot loser. Let's ogle over the cool new kid in town. Iceberg Lettuce is great, and anyone who can stop those stupid torch zombies is a winner in my book. A tier. I'd imagine this will be my first real controversial plant today. I don't think anyone is out there putting Bonk Choy in S, and I understand why. He's got a pretty short range, and at this point in the game, there are just better versions of him, like the Wasabi Whip, for example. And overall, he just doesn't look that great. But <laughs> he's my boy. I bring him everywhere I go. Boss fights are a breeze for him. His plant food ability takes out weakened gargantuars. He punches like crazy, and he don't ever stop. He even turns around if he has to. I honestly forgot he wasn't in the first game. I've gaslighted myself by using him so often. He's my boy, okay? Deal with it. S tier. Just like that, we move on to the Pirate Seas. The game is slowly introducing new and old characters at this point in the game, so for now these worlds are going to come and go super quick. First up is one of the coolest looking new additions, the Snapdragon. His fire breath hits the three lanes in front of him, but with a super short range. His plant food ability is awesome though, he gets to fly and everything. Snapdragon sort of in a similar position to Bok Choy, where there's now much better versions of it, like the freaking cold Snapdragon. It's just superior in every way. So while I love him in theory, he is going to be held back to an A tier. 
There are a few premium plants sprinkled in during the adventure mode, and our first one is the Power Lily. And yes, I'm freaking broke because I had to buy it. I'm so freaking shad. But at least I can get a free plant food whenever I desire. It's a great thing to have, but at the same time, it is visually and practically pretty boring. Like we went from a literal fire-breathing dragon to free plant food. No matter how entertaining it is to waste sun by using the plant food to make a new power lily, I've got to put it in D. It is so cute seeing the coconut cannon get excited about blasting some zombies. The cannon is pretty dang strong, but it'll cost you 400 sun. You get one big ball, just like me, and then you must wait for a recharge. As long as you have other plants to help out, it's no biggie, but man, some levels are really tough because of him. This is the first plant in the game you get to manually fire, and we'll see a few more of these on the list today. Of course, wasting a shot on a single zombie is some normie behavior, but taking out big groups of zombies is a great reason to bring him in. His plant food nuke is also pretty powerful. Yeah, I love the coconut cannon. He's an instant classic. But I'd be lying if I said I brought him in outside of the pirate seas. Sorry, buddy. C tier. All the spring bean fans out there, yeah, you might want to plug your ears for a second. What the freak am I supposed to do with you? Great, you send a zombie back a few feet, but then you just sleep? Actually, sleep is too generous of a word. You're practically hibernating, spring bean. More like bing chilling, am I right? F tier. Speaking of bings, here's the chili bing. Uh, I mean, bean. He's our first new plant in the Wild West, and he... He... He makes zombies fart. Lol. So heckin' random. I can't even believe this guy. Now, as funny and hilarious and really mature fart jokes are, I do enjoy bringing in the chili bean. It insta kills the zombies that eats it and stuns all the zombies behind it. That's a really great plant for just 50 sun. Plus, his plant food ability is to have sex and make, aw, twinsies. If gargantuars could eat, if pianos could eat, if torch guys could eat, if everyone could eat, this would be S. But not everyone eats, so B it is. Any plant that can help mow down the chickens and weasels are a bonus in my book. The lightning reed is always my go-to in those levels, although the bong choy can also typically get the job done. Regardless, I really love the design of the lightning reed. There are no improvements to be made, it's perfect. The poor little guy isn't much of a damage dealer, but that's okay. His storm cloud plant food power doesn't always go where you need it to, but that's okay. He's gonna go and B, and you know what? That's okay. You know what's not okay? The pea pod! Yep, we've got our first brand new pea in the game, and they decided, you know what? We only got up to four peas last time. I'm thinking we make it five now. And that's great and all, but man, is it a strange choice to ever bring this plant in? I have to say, the concept is genius, and is by far one of the most unique plants in the first few worlds of this game. You start out with a single pea shooter, and you can keep adding until the fifth. And yeah, even the plant food power is pretty freaking cool. Seeing that massive pea shooter head come out of the ground is always a treat. But wasting your time trying to get those pea shooters all the way up to five peas is pointless. And if it gets eaten, you're back to square one. I think this one comes down to having an awesome concept that becomes useless after leaving the Wild West. Let's go with C. I made the decision to follow the almanac, not the order of worlds, so that means we are moving all the way up to the far future. Basically, these plants were released in this order, and the worlds were changed around later on. It doesn't really matter. That just means we get to talk about our third bean of the day, the laser bean. I don't want to be rude, but this has got to be one of the most uninspired designs. Just a bean with an antenna? You can do better than that. I know you can. However, getting to hit every zombie at the same time in a column with just one hit is pretty freaking nice. I also love how insane he looks during the plant food power. I think your design is lazy, but I just can't deny how useful you can be. So let's take him in B. We all remember Citron from Garden Warfare 2, but was he always so cool? Well, from a design standpoint, he's a little harder to look at here. But I gotta admit, his little baby form is pretty dang cute. Seeing him charge up is really satisfying, and his big old electric plant food balls are almost as electric as my own. In the end, I feel like he's just a less effective version of the coconut cannon, and despite the cheaper price, I think it's gonna even out to a C as well. Again, putting an antenna on a peach does not make it futuristic. That's called being lame, dude. Now, I truthfully do not hate the EM peach. Why should I? Those mech zombies can be really frustrating, so shutting them all down for a second is super helpful. But yeah, outside of the far future, the end peach can't really serve a purpose. It can stop the mechanical bulls, fine. But yeah, I'd imagine most people have forgotten about this thing by now. Not F, but a very low D tier. Infinite sounds like what I'm gonna do after looking at fan art of Solar Flare, but it's actually just the newest advancement in walnut technology. It may have half the health of a normal walnut, but it respawns as long as its projector is there. To me, I'd rather just bring in a walnut because I probably don't need it to respawn, 
So with that, I'm putting it in F. Just kidding. I totally got all the PVZ nerds out there, didn't I? Admit it, your greasy little sausage links were itching to type an exacerbated comment, weren't you? I failed to mention the best part of the infinite, and that is the plant food power. He creates a full barrier across the entire screen. Think that's good? Make like five infinites and you have five barriers. This is insanely overpowered and infinite looks crazy cool, so he has got to be my next S tier plant. <laughs> more like magnifying ass, am I right? Oh no, I'm wrong! Sometimes I see magnifying grass at the top of people's list, and other times he's like all the way down at the bottom. I'm a little scared by that, and that's mostly because I don't really know why people would put it at S. I am generally asking for some comments to explain, but for now, I'll just go through my experience with it. This is another insane plant that uses sun as its ammo. It's pretty strong, but you can pretty quickly run out of sun and be screwed. I just find it hard to do well with this guy, and I know there are safer options out there than this. However, I do remember getting stuck on a big white beach level, and looking up a guide on how to beat it, all I saw was this magnifying grass strategy. It still took me multiple tries to get through it, but I gotta say it was probably the best strategy for that level without many premium plants to work with. I find the magnifying grass insanely hard to use, and to know when to use, but it looks cool, and some people really like it, so for now, I'll put it in the lower half at C tier, and it can change into the future if I need to. Ready for another crazy concept? You can place these tiles to share plant food power with any plant using the tile turnip. Your first one is free, then it gets much more expensive. But you could totally just place one on a sunflower and start generating some crazy sun crazy early. I think the biggest advantage is being able to choose any tile and any plant. You can make an infinite create a barrier while dealing some damage at the same time. And sure, the tile turnip looks a little goofy, but let's not hold that against him. It's kind of endearing in a way. I love the concept, but there's no way tile turnip is top tier for me. Truthfully, it takes total talent to trespass at the tippity top of the tier list, but the trustee at Trepid Tile Turnip takes tremendous temper tantrums unless I totally toss him in Tay tier. The Dark Ages reintroduced us to all of our favorite mushrooms, which is why somebody was left out, and why there are only two new plants in this section. Man, when they can't think of a cool new plant, they really just say, screw it, we're doing a bean again. Or maybe they realize their lack of legumes in the first game should be reconciled? I don't know, but if I see one more freaking legume on this list, I'm gonna lose it. Let's start out by looking at this thing. What are you so smug for? God, I hate it already, stupid bald-headed free! And it wants to get eaten? Erm, um, okay, you can be in Devor, that's cool, that's cool. I do appreciate having another way to earn sun, but I have never brought in the sunbeam over regular sunflower. You really can't start around with it either, because the zombie has to take damage to earn sun, and most early zombies don't have a ton of health anyways. I am not a fan, and he still looks smug about it. That's it, you pissed me off for the last time. F tier. What did I just say about legumes? At least it ain't a god dang bean this time, but you're pushing your luck, Scoob. Our second new pea is now a combination between the walnut and the pea shooter. It's pretty clever, but seeing half of the peanut get eaten is actually traumatizing. Imagine having your conjoined twin just get eaten one day. You'd be pretty freaked out. Anyways, compared to most premium plants, this is a pretty sad inclusion. I would much rather bring in a good damage dealer and a good defense plant than bring in the peanut. I definitely don't hate it, but I'm also not willing to go higher than D tier. Sorry guys. I like a challenge in games, but sometimes Big Wave Beach is just too much for me. Like I said during Magnifying Grass, I was completely stuck on a level with no idea how to get through it. These new plants are kind of unhelpful for it too, which is weird. Probably the most helpful one would have to be the bowling ball though. Or at least that's what I've heard. I've always kind of hated the bowling bolt. I felt like I had to get some lucky bounces for it to be worth bringing in. But apparently if you really level this thing up, it can be crazy strong. I don't like the idea of a plant being good only after getting it to a high level, but hey, if people think he's one of the best plants, then I won't argue. It's a fun idea, and the Doug Trio looking design is great too, but I personally do not like using it. I hate to think of the comments I'm going to get for this, but D tier. Poor Cattail has sort of been replaced by the homing thistle but there are some differences to discuss. It can still shoot any zombie on screen, but it fires less shots and deals more damage. Apparently, at one point, the homing thistle always targeted the zombie closest to your home, which would be pretty fitting considering the name, but now it's not so accurate. Thanks for nerfing a plant people paid real money for. Very cool. Basically, having a homing attack is always nice, but there's a reason why having more control in what your plants are doing is often the better strategy. I'm not a big fan of the homing thistle, and I'm putting it in C tier. I mean, come on. If you hate the guacodile, you need therapy. Who hurt you? Well, I know it wasn't guacodile, cause this guy kinda sucks. I hate when I'm torn between the cutest looking plant of all time, who has a pretty crappy attack power. 
but don't take it out on him, he's been a good boy! Guacodile has a pretty slow shot from far away, but he lunges as soon as the zombie gets close. I like to use Guacodile primarily on the fishing zombies because they are stupid annoying and the sooner they are dead the better. But otherwise, especially on Big Wave Beach, I just can't waste my time with him. He isn't good enough. I want to say S so bad because I love him, but a crappy power is going to make it tough. His cute little baby guacs he spawns are keeping him an A tier, alright? Trust me, he's like a D in power, I understand. Banana Launcher is our spiritual successor to the Corn Cob from the first game. Its power is kind of the same, although I'm guessing that banana is a lot weaker. Okay, everybody, stop! Wait for it. Sorry, we could not move further without hearing from the banana launcher. Well said, buddy. The design here is pretty funny. They literally put a dumb face on a banana and called it quits. But this time the laziness actually kind of paid off, because I do like it. I've never felt like the banana launcher has been worth its 400 cent cost, however. Unless you can afford a group of them, it feels like you're wasting your time. And I'm slow in the brain, so I forget to keep track of when he's reloaded. Anything else to add? Banana. Couldn't have said it better myself. B tier. I decided to start our premium plant section by bringing in a mint. Mints are a new concept that were added after the adventure mode was complete. Each plant falls under a mint category, so the idea is you can use a specific mint to temporarily power up every plant you have within that mint's category. I hope that wasn't too confusing, and it might make more sense after we take a look at the Enlightenment. I truthfully just chose a random one to start with, and the Enlightenment mostly has plants that generate sun. Wow, great job Jake, you picked the most exciting group of plants in the game, good work. So yeah, if you have a level where making sun is really important, Enlightenment is great. I had fun using it to help my magnifying grass strategy from earlier, but wasting a spot to generate more sun is probably not worth it in most cases, and compared to the other mint groups, this one just can't compare. Don't try to enlighten me, stupid mint. That's it, C tier. Now we can get to the real fun part of the video. Let's look at some of the kooky premium plants I've unlocked over the months of watching ads in preparation for this video. First up is none other than the Kiwi Beast. Aw, he's so cute. Oh no, he's aging rapidly. <gasps> ah! Kiwi Beast gets his full evolution line in just one plant. He starts out small, and the more a zombie attacks him, the bigger he grows. At the end, he's super strong, but then he kinda just gets eaten. His plant food power is not great or special either, like why not make a fourth form where he's huge and more beastly than ever? Missed opportunity guys. I love him, but he's definitely a C tier. Before I even unlocked Pokra, I had heard of the legends. Remember how I love Bonk Choi? Well he is basically inferior because of Pokra. She's way stronger, she slows each zombie she hits, and she even has long range spikes, making her your brand new best friend that can be used in probably every scenario the game has to offer. She's great for bosses, hordes of zombies, and she's alright with gargantuars. Just bring in some single use heavy hitters and you should be set, honestly. What sucks is it's probably one of my least favorite designs in the whole game. Like it isn't unbearable, but I simply don't like it. I won't keep her out of S though, just know if she's lucky, she's crazy good. What correlation does Bamboo have to being a Spartan? Oh yeah, absolutely freaking none! I guess I just wanted to make a Spartan and didn't know what else to do for Bamboo, but it seems strange for sure. Truthfully though, this guy is pretty decent. He's another close range guy, but the spear is a bit longer than others. He also has a little defense, and once the shield is destroyed, he does 3 times the damage. It's a great melee plant for sure, though I doubt people would use it over the Pokra. If you think about it, you really want him to get hurt so you can deal more damage, but there's not a decent way to just do that. He inherently starts off weak, which is sort of impractical. He's still a great plant, and I'm happy to put him in A tier. Another plant that costs free 99. I'm guessing it's great, isn't it? Well yeah, it's pretty good, but of course it isn't perfect. This plant technically generates sun, and turns one zombie into an enlightened zombie. Otherwise known as a Catholic, am I right fellas? <laughs> I am totally kidding, please don't smite me god, I don't want to be smited! But yeah, enlightened zombies earn you a bit of sun too, and they just kinda skedaddle out of there. They sometimes infect other zombies by reading them the bible or something, but some zombies are just too woke in their atheist ways to fall for it. Truthfully, I'm not a huge fan of this one. I've used it quite a bit now for this video, but I'd really just attack the zombies to be honest. I might be dumb, but that's okay. At least I hate religion! Yeah! D tier! Impair might be in the running for the best plant in this game. We can start off with the easy part, the design. He looks very funny and deranged, which is basically my two favorite personality traits ever. The purple and green look great together too, but then we get to actually using this guy. 
He costs zero sun, which at this point you must realize we have another puff shroom situation on our hands. The recharge time is crazy quick, so you can just start stacking these guys like crazy. The day I buy the imitator in this game is the day that I create an unstoppable army of impairs. What this plant does is it turns any zombie that it eats into an imp, and it kills any imp that it eats and makes them fart. La 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 la. Man, I love farting! <laughs> so the imp pair can kill super strong zombies with just two plants, all for the low cost of nothing. I decided I wanted to see if I could beat a level only using him, and I got pretty dang close. Some zombies don't eat, so you can't take down like gargantuars or wizards, but the plant food power turns nearby enemies into imps, so you can get away with it sometimes. The impair is insanely good, and unlike the puff shroom, the design is great too. S tier. Remember when I said the squash looked like Mike from Breaking Bad? Well, I was wrong. Puffball is a reincarnation of Mike. I'm having sex with you right now, Walter. Alright, Puffball, you can have sex with Walter later. You gotta poison some zombies for me real quick. Puffball is a single use plant that crop dust three columns at a time. The zombies are shocked that they just got shit on, and then shrivel up and die from the stench. I questioned how this thing was a plant, but these things are actually real. I stand corrected, PopCap, and I'm sorry I ever doubted you. If you're dealing with huge groups of zombies, the Puffball can really deal some damage for you. I'm thinking about trying him in the PvP mode now, but outside of that, is there really much of a use for him? The Puffball is great, Mike died tragically young. So let's give him a pity A tier. I truthfully have zero experience with vines, so I have no idea if there are better ones out there than the Pyre Vine. Erm, um, I think you mean Fire Vine, guys? Try using Autocrack next time, okay? The advantage of all vines is that they can be placed underneath another plant. It's taking the defense ones like Pumpkin to another level. The Pyre Vine shoots fire at the ground in front of it, dealing constant damage to the zombie on its way there. Basically, if you're looking for a way to make poker better, you've just freaking found it. Melee plants are the best for the pyre vine due to its short range, but even using plant food on it as a makeshift jalapeno is great too. And I have no idea why, but I am in love with his design. He's like a fiery anglerfish creep, and I love him! I don't know, I really like him, but I don't know if he's S or even A for that matter. <sighs> if only there was someone out there who could help me. Hi everybody, I'm making a cameo appearance. Oh, peas and potatoes, I can't wait to eat this plant from the ever-iconic series, Plants vs. Zombies. Uh, can you not eat the plant? I'm trying to make a video here. Wow, my vital organs are in a lot of pain. <laughs> you know you don't have to eat every plant to make sure they're edible, right? I ate the plate too. Well, Chupo from the hit YouTube channel Chupo, you've convinced me. If Pyrevine tastes so good, you want to eat the plate? Then that's gotta be an S tier. I figured we'd end with the most recent plant I've added to my collection, the Sundew Tangler. And yes, I realize this is immediately outdated. Thanks, Bean Sprout! Out of all the premium plants so far, I am baffled by this one. Probably the ugliest looking plant I've seen so far. Makes me not even want to bring it in. I've also mainly seen it in Arena before officially unlocking her, and with only a few, it feels like she just really sucks. In normal levels it's a bit more clear, but I hated this plant for a good month now. The Sundew Tangler grabs a nearby zombie, drains its health, and uses it as a human shield. Alright, certified girl boss right there. Look, let's just make this simple. It's a deceptively easy plant to use. It is invincible, and it's a sun producer, so slap it up towards the top and place some plants behind it. Its main problem is it can only produce sun from draining zombies, and if you actually level up your plants and make it too strong, it won't produce much sun. You can permanently ruin this plant. Isn't that crazy? There's no going back. I hate this plant, so let's do something crazy and end our list with one last F tier. If you thought I was bad at Plants vs Zombies before, I am horrified to hear your opinion of me now. The original Plants vs Zombies was complex on its own. I got roasted just for putting freaking chompers in front of walnuts. And now there's four times as many plants, and I can't keep up! The amount of insane strategies each one of these plants might have that I'm completely clueless to is probably infinite at this point. So here I am putting the Sunbean in F tier while some pro is playing the Beanophile loadout and proving me wrong. I tried so hard to study these plants and fairly compromise between design and power, but there will always be problems and hardcore PvZ fans are undoubtedly going to chew me up and spit me out once again. And you know what? I hope they do. I can't learn if everyone just tells me how amazing and perfect I am. I already know that! Teach me how to be better at the game, and maybe by the time I have gone through every plant in Plants vs Zombies 2, I'll be the best player the world has ever known. Or I'll fail horribly, but that's probably more entertaining anyways. Let me know what plants you'd want to see next on the list. 
Best way to do that is on my Discord. I might have to use a mod version to get some plants I don't have, but I am trying my best to actually unlock everyone legitimately, so I hope you appreciate the effort. I get afforded by the rest if you guys join my Patreon. You get free tier lists and early videos, so don't miss out. I'm going to be ranking the zombies from the first game next, so look forward to that. Thankfully, I don't have to factor how useful those guys are into my ranking. You got that video over 5,000 likes as requested, and it's done super well, so I'm more than happy to oblige. I've taken the liberty of assigning one of the plants on the list today to a member of my channel, so let me know how accurate your plant Sona is. Thank you to my members Groth One Finger, Cobalt Chrome E, Patrick Byerjan, Honomaki, Deccan99000, Bright Streak, MD Switchy, Kirby Fan Real 1992, Omegon, Daisy, and Poop Fart the Second. And of course, you can't forget Dojo Master, my newest member. If you want to be stereotyped, then please consider becoming a member of the channel today. Man, ranking all these plants have made me freaking hungry. I could really go for a salad right now. Tell me your mouth isn't watering from the sound of a bok choy, boomerang, and pear salad right now. Come on, Chupo, you're still here, right? Tell me that you're not hungry right now. Wow, I was so hungry that I ate the entire background. <laughs> yes, you did, Chupo. Yes, you did. His storm cloud plant food. His storm cloud plant. His storm cloud. His storm cloud. His storm cloud plant. His storm cloud plant food. His storm cloud plant food. Okay, you guys have to try saying the sentence. His storm cloud plant food power doesn't always go. Say that five times real fast. His storm cloud plant flower. His storm cloud. His storm cloud plant food. His storm cloud. His storm cloud plant. It's impossible. I can't freaking do it. What the hell? He.